So <coughs> let's cover the, the toolkit for this phase. <coughs> so first off, we have the DNA canvas, which is uh, our creation. Uh, basically, it is, uh, it, it is to help have that uh, the key things from the formation phase in one canvas as a guideline to really help work on this validation and also later phase and as a one snapshot document about um, the parts that are relevant for the organization and the product as a whole instead of just a business model. Uh, the, the big pitch deck, how to build a pitch deck, the key essence and the key elements of, the, of what should be in your pitch. Um, the planning tools, uh, taking from more traditional business uh, approach, the SWOT, uh, SWOT analyst tools and how that can be used, a business model canvas and the, the, the quickly also comparing that and uh, looking with uh, Lean Canvas. And then in context of business model canvas, also the value proposition canvas as a tool. <clears throat> and then uh, how does the business plan work in context of all of this? And then, of course, the concept of MVP uh, from the Lean Startup uh, concepts and how do we, how we should think about the MVP and what is the kind of the, the core essence of of, of that as a concept. Uh, validation canvas, which is uh, again another tool to help find the validation and general discussion and, and, the, and the concepts and examples of, of the funnel and A-B testing and, uh, and then KPIs in, in general, what type of KPIs uh, are relevant in, in this phase. <clears throat> so these are the, the key tools that we'll focus on on this module. And then the, the items to focus on validating is of, of course the product and specifically the product market fit, which means finding the product or service that fits with the specific customer uh, or a market of group of those customers. Uh, so that's that's the key essence and initial business model. So something whether whether that is a, a subscription based model, whether that's one off sales, whether that's a, a digital product or physical product based business model, uh, physical products as a service. There's many many different uh, considerations that can change, and then uh, the metrics to be used and, and then also the, the team validation of course is also like how do we validate the team uh, as part of the, the exercise of validating the product. So here is of course very very clear to how does the team work together, what is the commitment level, what type of attitude people are working with, uh, is the skills enough, uh, what we need to change, what we need to add uh, and so forth. And uh, I can say that based on experience, uh, you, you always can get surprised with people both ways. Some that you really thought were really great and they had all kinds of good, uh, good skills and good CVs and good things, but then when they are faced with real, like real world and real uh, challenges, you may be surprised on like how much, for example, attitude is missing or capability of, of, of defining a problem or executing on a problem. On the other hand, you may also be very surprised with people in regards of, of how humble they were or how little was uh, available, but then when it gets to time to execute, you may be very positively surprised how much actually some people be known. So don't take take any of the documentation that people bring with them or even what people think uh, from each other because the real test is the actual work. So it's important. This is also an important part before then starting to scale the organization that you have the right people there to begin with. 
So types of measures are the general validation metrics for the product uh, uh, from the eyes of the funnel. Uh, this hypothesis validation, basically if we have, uh, we think something is like this in theory, but is it so in practice? So it's a very simple true or untrue and the learnings from that and then the target metrics. So are we making progress? Are we, are we hitting certain conversion rates? Are we, are we uh, getting this type of response to our messages and so forth? So these are the types of measures. And it's very obvious but often overlooked and, and missed that if you don't have numbers, if you don't have targets, then how can you know if you were successful? Like if you say we need to get, we need to contact 100 customers and we need to get 10 as a customer, that's our threshold. So now if you set that up, now you know that if you get nine, you were not successful. If you get 20, uh, you were more than successful compared to your target, but maybe you need to think of um, how you can learn to estimate better. <clears throat> But the point is that if there is no target and if there are no numbers, what do you measure against? So not all activities are good, even if they feel good. Uh, not, in, not success is not enough if you had higher target. So you have to be very clear in defining these and iterating these and also learn to communicate this specifically with those potential investors that you're talking with. It's very easy and a common mistake that when you talk with the investors, you want to put really big numbers or big targets, but the more they have been around the block, uh, they basically then say, oh, that's great. And then say, okay, let's, let's meet two months later. And then they ask about those numbers. So where are you with the numbers of targeting those? And then, then you, you, you look better the more accurate target numbers you can give that you can actually hit because that either tells that you have capabilities of estimating good or you are more realistic or that you are actually making a good progress because you are both setting the measures and you're executing all the measures. So try to find the right balance that is actually useful for your business and builds credibility with the customers and also with investors. So let's look at the tools a, li uh, a bit more. So the DNA canvas is basically a, a one-page summary of the key essence of what the organization is about. So now we're talking about the organization, not organization and the company, not just the product, because um, clearly the product is just one version of a snapshot of time to have a product. If you're looking to grow big and go for the market, you will have many iterations of the same product. Most likely you will have multiple products catering for the, the mission and vision of the company. Initially, you will start a minimal viable product of the first product. So the startup and the, the scale up requires more than that. It, it's one product is not enough and you should have idea of uh, or a vision of what the company will be. So the essence of the DNA canvas is to capture why the company exists, what is its purpose, what is its mission, how does it uh, complete its mission, how does it do, how does it uh, serve its purpose and then the product, the what. What is the, the essence of, 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 of the purpose and how it's conceived through a what product? So this what product is, is the beginning part of the validation, but it's just one product out of many products or product versions that you have to create a lot over, along the time, that it should, should all still be relevant for the how and why. So this is the, the, the DNA uh, canvas. So basically it gives room to capture the purpose, the why statement, 
why do we exist, our, our beliefs and rationale, this is what we believe, this is how we think things should be, uh, this is why we exist and this is why we are here. Uh, and that should be a uh, statement uh, clearly. And then there's the, the vision. So what we will be when we grow up? What, how do we see our company in 10 years? How does the world look like in 10 years? And our, how is our company looking in that context? And then below there is the mission. It's basically the mission is this is the value that we're delivering an ongoing basis for this market. And, uh, and basically the strategy is then this is how we are doing it. When we believe the world looks like this and the vision of how we envision our company to be in 10 years, during that time we focus on delivering this value for the market in this way and without defining what the products are, this is the strategy how we are going to do it. We're going to be the fastest. We're going to be the cheapest, we're going to be the combination of uh, most agile and most liked company with best customer service in the industry, delivering that value, whatever that strategy is, that's how you work through that path. And then you have the roadmap, you have the key, key steps that you are aiming, being that uh, the first 100 happy customers, then you will have a, a, a next level can be uh, a thousand paying customers. The next can be uh, uh, one million uh, euros revenue, and, and so forth. And you can have multiple bullet points in each of this roadmap to kind of define and give perspective of how does the company look like uh, in this in this journey towards that vision in these different key milestones. And these are just a reflection of the things that you should have coming from the, the formation, uh, formation phase activities. And then finally, the values that, that uh, you abide with the company. So what type of values do you believe in? So that can be you know, sustainable, um, that can be fairness, that can be uh, brutal, whatever the values may be that you want to resonate, risk-taking. These are, there is no, again, right or wrong, these are just the values that resonate with you and your team and, and how you want those values to be when the company grows. And this one snapshot should be able to, to communicate for the whole organization as it grows to give guidance of what is the company about not through individual products. You don't see any products here because the products come and go and you have different versions of those, but the products is where the value is captured. The services, is, the services and products is where the value is captured that makes the whole company possible, that makes the progress possible, that measures ultimately whether this company should exist or not. So, I'm not going to go this in, in more detail, but this basically highlights these uh, same key points. And through the icons here, they're actually click, clickable icons in the materials. Uh, you can click on the icons to, to see a, a separate YouTube video by uh, different experts uh, explaining what a vision is or what is the why statement and, and the rationale behind that. So this should really help you to kind of get an essence of, of the whole, uh, whole uh, rationale between values and what those help, how, do you, how it helps to define your organizational culture and what is the value in that, in, in business context, 